Alrighty. All right, good morning, everybody. Um, hope you guys are doing well. Um, let me start uh, with prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much uh, for this time of worship, the time of praise, uh, to really glorify your name, um, to really uh, celebrate the true uh, King of Kings, Lord. Um, thank you for giving us this passage, uh, this book of Mark, um, where we can really just focus on uh, what you went through um, to really... Um, really just uh, die on the cross for our uh, sins. Um, I really be with the messenger today, Lord. Uh, really just um, uh, use him to deliver your word, uh, Missionary Paul. Um, continue to be with us, Lord, um, every day of our lives uh, at home. And uh, just name I pray, amen. Can we all stand? Oh, so for, for this song, this is a new song, um, or this is an old song, but we've never played this one before. Um, and the bridge will, will be like, how could you be so good to me? So it goes, how could you be so good to me? So I'll first sing that part, how could you go, uh, be so good to me? And then you guys at home um, would also sing, how could you be so good to me? So... You are more beautiful than anyone ever, every day. You're the same, you never change, nor never. How could you be so 
also a new song. Um, so in this passage, we've been really uh, learning uh, who really is the true king, and the true king is uh, Jesus Christ. So this um, song really rep um, really goes well with uh, what we're studying um, in the book of Mark, really just the whole um, the journey that uh, Jesus went through uh, and his love for us. So as we sing this song, let us uh, uh, be reminded of who really is the king of kings, um, Jesus Christ.
Let's all pray together. Uh, dear Father in heaven, uh, Father, thank you um, for Jesus who died for our sins. Uh, Father, thank you that uh, we could gather here together today uh, to listen uh, to your words and to uh, worship you at this time. Uh, Father, please bless uh, this congregation, uh, those who are here and those who are at home. Uh, please uh, give us a deep uh, peace and focus at this time. Uh, help us uh, not be distracted uh, by the many things in this world, um, uh, but help us uh, focus on you. Uh, Lord, please bless um, your messenger, um, St. Paul, and I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, and welcome to today's worship service. Uh, so we're going to begin with some announcements. Okay. Uh, so we have the UBF Summer Conference program here for brothers and sisters. Here are the dates. Um, you saw the dates. Okay. So we have the program for the Brothers Conference. And this is a Zoom conference, so you're going to be receiving a Zoom link. And I think you all know how Zoom works by now. Uh, so we can look at the program here. Um, actually, we don't have a, I don't believe we have a title for this conference. At, oh, we do, okay. Have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, okay, from Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Okay, so through the conference, we want to think about um, how to have the same mindset as Jesus, uh, especially Jesus' mindset in the midst of sufferings and trials and, uh, of course, uh, the cross. Uh, so uh, for the conference, we begin on Friday at 7 p.m., with a 10 minute, 10 minute message from Pastor John on Second Chronicles 7.14. And I think we know that Bible passage and that verse, 7.14, um, for if my people will humble themselves and pray uh, and uh, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven. So we want to pray. Uh, and for this conference, we want to think about um, what God is doing or what we should be doing, actually, during the pandemic. Uh, these, uh, the uh, Bible passages we chose, I don't know how we came up with these Bible passages, but I really think uh, it was the work of the Holy Spirit. So let's please pray for this Bible conference. Um, we're going to have a presentation after the after the keynote message. We're going to have a presentation from um, myself and Andrew uh, missionary Andrew Park, and then we're going to have discussion and fellowship. Okay, so that's Friday evening. Okay, and then for Saturday, we'll have a group Bible study on Acts chapter 16, 1 through 15. Actually, this is the passage where the Apostle Paul. Um, sees the vision of a man uh, from Macedonia saying, come over and help us. So we want to think about um, how to help those who are suffering, even if they may not look like they are suffering. Um, and then we're going to have a break, and then we're going to have our second Bible study, uh, Philippians chapter 2, the key point of the conference. Uh, so in that passage, we want to think about uh, the, our own attitude during the, this pandemic or de during this uh, trial for our nation and the world. Um, we want to learn from Jesus his attitude, which is to become nothing 
and uh, put on the very nature of a servant and humble himself. Uh, he humbled himself even to the point of death. Uh, he, uh, he humbled himself to the point of obeying God and even to the point of death. So please pray for this conference. Um, oh yeah, and then we're gonna have, of course, we're gonna have testimony writing and testimony sharing uh, after, after that. Okay, so please, please pray for this conference. Of course, this is really new for us. Uh, so um, we pray to rely on God's grace through the Holy Spirit. Okay, that's it. And then for next week's messenger, Next week's messenger is Pastor John, so please pray for him. And then also please pray for the Sisters Conference, um, which you know will follow uh, next month. Okay, um, so at this time we're going to have prayer from Samia. Let's pray together. Dear Lord, Thank you for today and the opportunity to worship you. Thank you for our children, family, and friends. Please let us always remember to have an attitude of gratitude and remember the verse in Psalms. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Thank you for taking care of us with your goodness and everlasting love and leading us to follow Jesus daily. Please let us continue to reflect on last week's message. But Jesus still made no reply, and Pilate was amazed. Thank you for Jesus, who kept being silent before the false accusations to sacrifice his life for us. Lord, please help us to be able to sacrifice ourselves to serve your interest instead of seeking after our corrupted self-interest. Lord, please help us to seek your will during this pandemic and help us humble ourselves and turn from our wicked ways. Please forgive our sins and heal our land America and the whole world and let people seek you and your salvation. Lord, please strengthen our faith and relationship with you and help us build loving relationships with people around us. Please help us to make all effort to reach out to people with your love through your wisdom from your word. Lord, please bless the UBF Summer Conference with your powerful words and joyful fellowship so that we may be empowered and built up through the conference. Lord, thank you that many families are having worship time at home. Please help each family to continually have spiritual time so that all families may become powerful house churches and children will grow up in a powerful spiritual environment. Lord, please bless Dr. Paul Lim's message and let us receive one word of God personally through the deep enlightenment of the Holy Spirit in our heart. Lord, please help us to worship you in spirit and truth with a repenting heart so that our worship may please and honor you. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, and now we'll have Bible reading from Mark chapter 15, 16 through 47. Okay, and I'm going to read the passage. It's quite a long passage, but um, I'll be reading the entire thing. Okay. Verse 16. The soldiers led Jesus away into the palace, that is, the praetorium, and called together the whole company of soldiers. They put a purple robe on him and twisted together a crown of thorns, thorns and set it on him. And they began to call out to him, Hail, King of the Jews. Again and again they struck him on the, they struck him on the head with a staff and spit on him. Following on their knees, they paid homage, they paid homage, uh, to, they paid homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple robe and put his own clothes on him, and they led him out to crucify him. A certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in from the country, and they forced him to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. Then they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it, and they crucified him. Dividing up his clothes, they cast lots to see what each would get. It was nine in the morning when they crucified him. The written notice of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. They crucified two rebels with him, one on his right and one on his left. 
Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, So you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and teachers of the law mocked him among themselves. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. Let this Messiah, this King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those crucified with him also heaped insults on him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, Listen, he is calling Elijah. Someone ran, filled the sponge with wine vinegar, put it on a staff, and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down, he said. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus saw how he died, he said, Surely this man was the Son of God. Some women were watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James the Younger, and of Joseph and Salome. In Galilee, these women had followed him and cared for his needs. Many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem were also there. It was preparation day, that is the day before the Sabbath. So as evening approached, Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent member of the council, who was himself waiting for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Pilate was surprised to hear that he was already dead. Summoning the centurion, he asked him if Jesus had already died. When he learned from the centurion that it was so, he gave the body to Joseph. So Joseph bought some linen cloth, took down the body, wrapped it in linen, and placed it in a tomb cut out of, a, cut out of rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb, tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where he was laid. Okay, and now we'll have the message from Paul Lim. Good morning. Good morning. Let's pray in a moment. Most gracious Heavenly Father, thank you so much for giving us opportunity to study the book of Mark so that we may learn Jesus' uh, sacrificial life. Today, please help us to see his glory uh, through his ultimate sacrifice on the cross. In Jesus' name I, I pray, amen. amen. The title of today's passage is my God, my God. The passage comes from Mark chapter 15, verses 16 through the end. I have a question for you. What is most important in your life, especially in this pandemic life? People say that nothing is more important than having a vaccine so that we may get back to normal life. Someone may still argue that nothing is more important than the election of the president who can tackle so many problems. What do you think? Have you been to Mount Rushmore? Mount Rushmore has four faces of Presidents. Mr. Trump wants to add this too because it's a very important thing for him. Surely he wants people's recognition and praise. How about Jesus? 
He's the creator God, the king of kings and the lord of lords. But he became a servant and slave of all. People who are looking for powerful kings could not see him, his glory, because there was nothing in his appearance we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men as a man of suffering. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. By his wounds, we are healed. Worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power, wealth, wisdom, strength, and honor, glory, and praise. Key verse 34. And at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, Laba Sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When Jesus was forsaken by God on the cross, he cried. The perfect relationship with God, Jesus treasured the most, was broken so that the righteousness of God would be satisfied and all our sins were forgiven. Forgiveness removes all the barriers between God and us. It is our greatest need, a need that can only be met by Jesus and his blood sacrifice on the cross. Then we would never be separated from him and his love again. Nothing is more important than securing this eternal love relationship with him. This is what matters to us all times. In Genesis, Adam disobeyed God and broke his relationship with God. Then he became fearful and lost the way to come to God. Genesis, Genesis 3.15 says, And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, you will strike his heel. This preliminary gospel became the one and only hope for all his descendants to come to God again. Then God continued to reveal his plan. 1 Peter chapter 1, 10 through 12. Concerning this salvation, the prophets searched intently and with the greatest care, trying to find out the time and circumstances to which the spirit of the Christ in them was pointing when he predicted the sufferings of the Messiah and the glories that would follow. Even angels long to look into these things. The prophets searched, trying to find out the time of crucifixion. The spirit of Christ in them helped them understand the sufferings of the Messiah. Surely, God fulfills all his words of promises. Finally, Jesus came to this earth in physical body. He repeatedly said about his death, starting from the book of Mark, chapter 8, 31. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed, and after three days, rise again. At today's passage, the time has come for him to be killed. Then, what happened to Jesus so far? Without sleeping at the previous night, he prayed earnestly to obey God until his blood dropped from his forehead. 
he was arrested and tried by the highest priest. He was blindfolded and struck with the feast. In chapter 15 last week, he was tried by Pilate. Especially verse 15, Pilate had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. Jesus was stripped and tied his hands to a post above his head. The whip was made of ladders, ladders, and sharp bones and metals embedded. As Jesus was flogged, he was flogging. He was flogged again and again. His skin, muscle, and blood vessels were torn apart, bleeding throughout all his bodies. He had already severe blood loss and in shock condition. He could have died there. As the prophet Isaiah said, Jesus, Jesus' appearance was so disfigured beyond that of any human being, and his form marred beyond human likeness. I have divided this passage into three parts in time sequence, before, during, and after crucifixion. Part one, before crucifixion, verses 16 through 23. Look at verse 16 through 23. The soldiers led Jesus away into the palace that is the praetorium and called together the whole company of soldiers. They put a purple robe on him then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on him. And they began to call out to him, Hail, King of the Jews! Again and again, they struck him on the head and a staff and spit on him. Falling on their knees, they paid homage to him. And when they had marked him, they took off the purple robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. Before Jesus was crucified, there was a custom that the Roman soldiers, the, the soldiers entertained by torturing the convict. They dressed Jesus like a king, putting on him on purple robe and crowned him with a crown of thorns. His head and face were covered with a profuse bleeding, changing his clothes again and again made his body bleeding worse and worse. The soldiers tormented him by saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They beat him on the head and spit on him. They fell on the knees to mock him. These Roman soldiers didn't have any idea who Jesus was. Jesus silently endured all pains and humiliations. He must have prayed, Father, forgive them. Isaiah chapter 53 foretold us, we all like a sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers was silent. So he did not open his mouth. When we know that we all, like a sheep, have gone astray, how sinful we are, how much we deserve for all our sins, then we know the reason why Jesus had to go through all these pains on our behalf. Jesus loved us and endured such humiliation. He did not open his mouth. He was silent. It was his silent prayer to God. We are all weak and fragile. Everyone has his or her breaking point. 
I also reached mine on and off. We succumb to our own anger, her feelings, grudge, criticism, and judgmental mentality. We lash out on each other. Then our precious relationship is falling apart. We need to lift our eyes to see Jesus, the king of silence. His silence makes all our complaints subside. His silence truly humbles us and calms the angry and hot feelings inside of us. Jesus was forced to carry the cross, but he had no strength to do so. Verse 21, a certain man from Cyrene to Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in from the country, and they forced him to carry the cross. An innocent bystander named Simon was forced to help Jesus carry the cross. He was told, hey, you, pick up this cross and follow him. Get it? He seems to be an unfortunate man who happened to be there in the wrong place and the wrong time. He carried the cross all the way for Jesus. But he turned out to be the blessed man that day. He did not choose to suffer. But when he shared Jesus' suffering, his glorious suffering, later he and his sons came to know Jesus personally. So both suffering for Jesus and knowing him is inseparable because he is the king of suffering. Verses 22, 23 says, they brought Jesus to the place called Gogota, which means the place of the skull. Then they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. The way to his place called Gogota, where Jesus would be crucified, was pretty long, more than two miles away. Probably by the time Jesus arrived at the place, he had no more strength left. They offered him some wine to relieve his pain, but he refused it. Why not? Jesus determined to taste all the possible pains of a punishment. By his wounds, we are healed. By his wounds, we are healed. We carry all wounds and scars in us. Jesus had to go through so much pains, humiliations, wounds, and now he was ready to be killed slowly on the cross. He really wanted to heal our accumulated wounds for a long time due to broken relationship, more than decades, even among believers broken families, hurt feelings, deeply, stubbornly seated wounds, and restore our brokenness in order to enable us to serve God without fear, in holiness, in righteousness, once again. Part two, during crucifixion, verses 24 to 37. Look at verse 24 and 25. And they crucified him, dividing up his clothes. They cast lots to see what each would get. It was nine in the morning when they crucified him. The author Mark simply wrote here, they crucified him. After driving the nails on his hands and feet mercilessly, they lifted him up on the cross. It was the most painful, slow, and humiliated way of execution. Jesus was going to die because he could not breathe any longer. 
Here, dividing up Jesus' clothes, they cast lots to see what each would get. What a sin! What a cruel sin in front of dying Jesus on the cross. They don't care anything else. Just do such a crazy thing with the ignorance. It was 9 a.m. in the morning when they crucified him. Verse 26 and 27, the written, notice of, uh, the written notice of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. They crucified two rebels with him, one on his right and one on his left. Above Jesus, the sign said, the king of the Jews. He never led any violent protest against the wrong. Much less, he did not claim himself as a king, political king. But the people charged him with the crime of being the king, committing the crime of interfering with their lives. Unfortunately, the world has not changed much since. People are still un unwilling to humble themselves let their true King Jesus rule their hearts, even in this pandemic. However, it does not change the truth. Jesus is the King, the Messiah, the Christ, and the Son of God. He was crucified for those who would later know Jesus, believe in him, and surrender their lives to be ruled by Jesus humbly. Verse 28 is missing in NIV version. But according to the footnote, it is like Luke chapter 22, 37. It is written, and he was numbered with the transgressors. And I tell you that this must be fulfilled in me. Yes, what is written about me is reaching is fulfillment. Jesus was treated by human beings to be one of transgressors, the criminals. It was a fulfillment of God's word in order that he would take away all our sins in his body. And we may come back to relationship with God. Verses 29 through 32, those who were passed by heard inserts at him shaking their heads and saying, so you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers, teachers of the law marked him among themselves, he saved others. They said, but he cannot save himself. Let this Messiah, this King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those crucified with him also hipped in search on him. They could have left Jesus alone while he was painfully dying on the cross. But they said, save yourself, save yourself. They wanted to discredit Jesus by revealing his helplessness on the cross. But it wasn't only people's voice, but it was, it was also Satan's voice. Of course, Jesus could save himself. However, he, not, he did not come all the way to the cross to save himself. Rather, he came to die as a ransom for many. We are not able to save ourselves. But Jesus, by his own choice, stayed to the end on the cross to save us. Praise Jesus. Mark chapter 8, 35, whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. It is our human nature to save ourselves first. 
we try to save ourselves from pain, suffering, or death at any cost. We all want ease, easygoing, comfort, and pleasure. Our nature urges us not to sacrifice our lives for God and for others. But God's saving work can be done only when we sacrifice ourselves. We sacrifice our own interest and right for God and for others. Verse 33, at noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. So far from 9 a.m. to noon, Jesus suffered at the hands of men. For the next three hours from noon to 3 p.m., Jesus would suffer at the hands of God himself as well. Darkness came over the whole land, first of all. Probably the sun was too sad to work as usual. It is like the ninth plague in the book of Exodus. The total darkness for three days before God's final act of judgment against every firstborn in Egypt. So darkness represents the imminent judgment of God. So here in Mark's gospel, darkness represents the imminent judgment of God against all our sins. Darkness covered the whole land as the sin of the whole world was placed upon Jesus, the Lamb of God, his physical body. Verse 34, at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, laba sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It has been six hours since Jesus was hung on the cross. Every minute was agonizing and excruciating. We cannot imagine how much he suffered. But his pain of having God turn away from him must have been the greatest pain for him. Jesus cried out, my God, my God. He is crying not because of his physical pain, but because his perfect, intimate love relationship with God was broken. As long as his love relationship with God was right, he could bear any pain and suffering so far. But no sooner had God cut his relationship between because of all man's sins, then he felt abandoned by God. It was indescribable. He was sorry, he was very sorry for his broken relationship with God, even for a while. As for him, the love relationship with God was most important. Again, what is most important for you? Have you ever cried recently when your love relationship with God was broken even for a while? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Before the creation, the Father God and the Son Jesus had enjoyed a perfect union. Jesus said, I and the Father are one. Our Heavenly Father also pointed out, you are my son, whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only son who is himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father has made him known. But on the cross, Jesus was forsaken the relationship he treasured more than anything else was now broken. It happened 
only because of one reason, one good purpose that was he became the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. Then the righteousness of God would be satisfied and we would never be separated from God and his love again. Verses 35 and 36. When some of those standing near heard this, they said, listen, he's calling Elijah. Some of them filled the sponge with wine vinegar and put it on a staff and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down, he said. Maybe from a distance, Eloi sounds like a lie. According to Jewish tradition, Eliza would come to the rescue of those who are troubled. But Eliza never came. Jesus was now truly forsaken by God and man as the Lamb of God for all our sins so that we would be reconciled to God. Verse 37, with a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. It was the second cry, but it was quite different from the first cry. Why? It was not a cry of agony, but it is the cry of victory. John's Gospel says, knowing that everything had now been finished, so that the scripture would be fulfilled. Jesus said, I am thirsty. Receiving the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. The cup of God's wrath has now emptied. With a loud cry of a triumph as the king of sacrifice, Jesus breathed his last. Jesus also fulfilled his own word. John 15, 13. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Yes, the greatest love comes at the greatest cost. Love is truly proven by its full cost paid with Jesus and his death. Also, we know that our sins are very serious. Our sins cost him on the cross. Part three, after crucifixion, verses 38 through the end. Verse 38, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. As the first sign after the crucifixion, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The Jerusalem temple had a curtain that was about 60 feet high and 30 feet wide. It was four inches thick, representing the huge barrier of sin between, existed between God and sinners. In his great mercy, through Jesus, God tore it down from top to bottom. Now, God has opened a new and living way to come to God through Jesus at any time and any place. Verse 39, when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus heard his cry and saw how he died, he said, surely this man was the son of God. Here, the centurion must be the one who led Jesus' crucifixion. He must have seen many cases of crucifixions. He was one of the many hopeless people living godly life from paycheck to paycheck. He was under his own sins and guilt and condemnation. But that day, 
his eyes were opened to see Jesus and his glory, what God had done in and through Jesus. He came to know the love of God for simple people like himself. He was born again that day through Jesus who was wounded, pierced, crucified, and died for him. Surely this man is the son of God, was the power and the fruit of the cross. John chapter 12, 32. I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. In Jesus' cross, we have a hope and vision in these last times. Let us remember his word. When they serve others with a message of his cross, they will also say, surely this man is the son of God. Verse 40 and 41, some women were watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Younger, and of Joseph and Salome. In Galilee, these women had followed him and cared for his needs. Many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem were also there. Here, many women were mentioned, especially three Marys. They had been faithful to follow Jesus and cared for his needs. Their relationship with Jesus continued in such a hostile atmosphere while most men disappeared. The women continued to give their respect and loyalty to Jesus, even though they might not receive any benefit, practical benefit, from Jesus, who was crucified and died by now. Lastly, look at verses 42 through the end. It was preparation day, that is the day before the Sabbath. So as evening approached, the Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent member of the council, who was himself waiting for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Pilate was surprised to hear that he was already dead. Summoning the centurion, he asked him if Jesus had already died. When he learned from the centurion that it was so, he gave the body to Joseph. So Joseph bought some linen clothes, took down the body, the wrapped it in, in the linen, and placed it in a tomb cut out of rock. Then he rolled the stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph saw where he was laid. Here is another powerful change of a one person, intellectual Joseph, through the cross. He was a man whose hope was in the kingdom of God. But he was a kind of closet believer. But when we saw Jesus on the cross, give up his life for the sins of the world, his heart was deeply moved to come out of his hiding place. He did something for Jesus. His relationship with God was fully restored that day. With a proper procedure of approval, he took down the body of Jesus and wrapped it in linen and placed it in his own tomb. So it became a part of gospel thanks to his change and his sacrifice. Then chapter 15 ends as two women witnessed the burial site for the resurrection. Conclusion, today Jesus gave us all. Even he sacrificed his own best gift, the perfect relationship with God. God is holy and hates sin. But God so loved us that he gave his one and only son. On the cross, he even turned his back on Jesus, who became our sins. 
to Jesus a broken relationship with God was unbearable. He tasted the hell. And God's judgment of all sins on our behalf. Jesus did not save himself to the end with a clear goal to restore our relationship with God, which is the basic and fundamental solution for all our life problems. Praise him, praise Jesus, who bore all our sins, pains, wounds, and died slowly on the cross with a great humiliation to restore our perfect love relationship with God. Praise Jesus, the king of a relationship. May God help us sh share this one and only hope, Jesus and his cross, the king of a relationship for all people in the troubled and broken world. Amen. One word, my God, my God. Let's pray in a moment. Most gracious Heavenly Father, thank you so much for sending Jesus with a beautiful purpose to restore our eternal love relationship with God. May the Lord help us cherish this best gift, the relationship, no matter what happened, and share this blessing with our troubled neighbors. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Uh, we thank God for the message today. Um, so even though the passage is kind of long, I didn't feel like the passage is long at all because the message is so good. Uh, I, you know, if possible, I'd like to even listen to the message of the cross again next week. It was that good. So uh, let's give thanks to God. Um, and we're going to sing hymn song at this time. And now we'll have uh, closing announcements and prayer topics from Pastor John. Thank <laughs> you.
Thank God we heard a wonderful message. Jesus is the king of relationship. So let us remember the love of Christ. Let us think about how much he loves us. He refused to reduce his pain even a little bit in order to take away all our pain and suffering. He suffered the most, including being forsaken by his own father in order to take away all of our pain and agony. So when we believe his love for us, nothing can trouble us. His love makes us more than conquerors. Secondly, let's seek the will of God more than anything else. Think about what is God doing. I read the Second Chronicles chapter seven, verse fourteen. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. So let us humble ourselves. This is the time to humble ourselves and pray and seek God's face and turn from our wicked ways. Number four, let's pray for the protection of medical professionals, healthcare workers, especially our co-workers who are working in the front line. Number five, pray for the protection and provision of people around the world who cannot maintain their basic life, especially our co-workers. Number seven, use our time as a good opportunity to share the love of Christ with our children and also our spiritual children. Number eight, humble ourselves. Let us humble ourselves and follow government guidelines, including wearing masks and keeping social distance. It is an act of love for our neighbors because we can be carriers of the virus without symptoms. Number nine, pray for government authorities, the president, governors, mayors, health specialists, that they make wise decisions. Number 10, pray for UBF Summer Bible Conference online. The coming weekend of August is for men, and the first weekend is for women. 11, financial offerings to serve our treasure in heaven and also be a blessing for others. Number 12, uh, Peter Lopez married. The Lord will surely bless his family, so let us pray for them. They may be a blessing to many. So we share their joy and thanks together. I'll be a next messenger. You can pray for my message and prayer and the wisdom of God. These are the prayer topics, and I will pray and finish the service. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for uh, teaching us that you are the king of the relationship. You suffer so much in order to pay all the pain and agony and suffering for us. Father, please help us to remember your agony in our own place, that we may know your love and be strengthened. Please uh, bless us to know your love and live uh, more than conquerors. Father, please bless us to seek your will more than anything else and think about what is you are doing. Please help us to humble ourselves and pray and seek your will, especially turn from our wicked ways. Father, please protect our medical professionals and healthcare workers especially our co-workers, you may protect them from the virus. Father, also I pray, we pray for the protection and provision of people around the world who cannot maintain their basic life, especially our co-workers. Please bless us to use our time as a good opportunity to share the love of Christ. Father, we pray that you may bless us to humble ourselves and follow government guidelines, including wearing masks and keeping social distance. Father, I pray for the president, Trump, governors, mayors, health specialists, that they make me, that they, 
that they, that they may make wise decisions. I pray for our UBF Summer Bible Conference online this coming weekend for men, and then first week of September is for women. You may really bless us to hear word and have fellowship together in your love and water in your word. Father, please uh, remember Terry Lopez and his wife, Peter Lopez and his wife. Thank you for blessing them to um, form a house church. You, you may really bless uh, his family and use them as a source of blessing for many. Thank you for sharing um, their joy and thanks together with us. Father, help me to prepare for the coming Sunday message and help me to pray and have your wisdom to serve you. I thank you. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.